On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we have one huge big topic. We talk about early youth sport specialization and really maybe some of the things we can do to fix it and instead of fighting it. Maybe that's a, a different change in perspective that could make a difference. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're up here at Champion PT and Performance in Boston. I'm here with Lenny Macrina, Dan Pope, Mike Scaduto, Dave Tilly, all of us here at Champion answering your questions. We actually have a good episode here for Dave. This is going to be a good one here. We talk about youth <laughs> sports specialization. I know nothing about that. Kind of a... <laughs> Kind of a good, like, one general kind of question episode because I think it's a big question. I want to hear everybody's thoughts. But Drew Dudick from uh, the, the College of Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, take it away, Drew. What, what, want to read the official question since I've already ruined the anticipation. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have Josh from Phoenix, Arizona. I work, I work with a lot of young athletes. It seems like the ones that get hurt the most tend to specialize in one sport too early. I've heard so many different opinions on the topic, ranging from st- saying that it is best to be a multiple sport athlete to others that say to specialize and become a great, great at one. What is your opinion? Wow. So, like many of us, what's his name, Josh? Yeah. Josh works with a lot of young athletes that are starting to specialize, and we're starting to see that. Um, Dave, how young did gymnasts start specializing? What age usually? Two. Four. One. <laughs> <laughs> like realistically, everyone starts gymnastics that like goes on for a long time, it's like three to five is usually when people get into it and then like you get picked for competitive stuff around like six to seven. That's what I was going to ask. So when does gymnastics as a culture tell you, hey, you don't have time for anything else, you have to just do this yeah. now? It's usually like seven, eight, nine in that wow. department because they get, it's like natural selection, right? Like kids that are naturally mobile and that kids that have like some sort of body weight awareness just do well in preschool classes. Then general classes like, you know, kids that are tall do well in basketball, kids that, you know, run fast do well in track and you get picked and the coaches are like, that has potential because they're really mobile. And so they get like, hey, do you want to try out for team? Usually like six or seven, but like competitive levels start at like, like we coach girls at our gym that are like seven pre-team, six, five pre-team. Wow. And it's like a joke. It's not really gymnastics, but it's like you're on that track early. That's 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 pretty pretty young. That's crazy. What what did you I mean, what do you guys what are you seeing? What did you guys do growing up? No, oh, I personally did a ton of sports. I had like sport ADD. Like I didn't even <laughs> do like three sports. I kept switching my sports through the seasons. And I gotta tell you, I it wasn't a good way to do it. I didn't get extremely good at one particular sport. Um, even pole vaulting, which I ended up doing in college, I started a little bit late. And to be honest, if we had something that we have available at Champion today, I think I would have been a much better athlete in the sense that you can probably get a good strength conditioning program, solid coaching, right? And then good physical therapy care on top of that. It's amazing. Um, the other thing, I just saw a patient of the day who's on three baseball teams right now, like doing a crazy amount of stuff. He's like, ah, I got hurt. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're on three teams right now. So there's got to be some sort of balance, you know? And I think it probably depends on the sport, right? Um, my thought is potentially if you're playing a uh, more of a field or court based sport, if you play a variety of sports that are similar, it's probably going to be one of those sports where maybe you can specialize a little bit later, you know? If it's something super specific like gymnastics, maybe you do have to specialize a little bit sooner. And maybe because of that, you're more prone to have some injuries. Um, but the other thing is that I do believe that obviously you need to train smart, but the more time and effort you put into something, the better you're going to be at it generally. Right. So it's, it's just kind of trying to bridge that, um, and get that happy medium between. Uh, doing enough and not doing so much to get hurt. There's so much pressure to, for these kids to play these multiple teams and, and not do multiple sports. You get If you don't keep up with everybody else who's doing it or the coaches may be biased if you don't play on their team this season because you're going to run into that coach again in another season, he may not play because those other kids played on his team. It just seems like there's so much pressure for kids to play all these different teams in one sport 
and not be able to do soccer and not be able to do basketball. I'm kind of curious for, I don't know, for baseball, but like when do, because a lot of gymnastic stuff is based on colleges. Like there are very few people go to the elite Olympic track in gymnastics. Many people want to compete in college. Like we have kids that sign letters of intent like when they're like 13, 14. It's crazy. Like ridiculous. When does baseball sign? like college stuff. I mean, it's starting to creep up a little bit earlier, but I, th I think the majority of collegiate sports are still, you know, juniors. Junior. Like, I think that's you know, like, they're, they're putting junior very summer. heavy rules in the NCAA now, which yeah. just came out last year. We need to change that. And that's, it's getting better, but I mean, I wrote a couple chapters off of like what Lenny had researched in this for gymnastics and like, it's bonkers to see the things that are happening in early specialization and year round training, they kind of get lumped together uh, in terms of like burnout rates, injury rates, and not performing to your optimal level. Like people think we only talk about injuries, but it's also like you are probably not as great of an athlete if you only do one sport all year round from a young age. Right. Like, and that's been shown in the MLB, that's been shown in the NBA, yeah. that's been shown in the, right. like hockey. All so. the research is starting to show that. So it's amazing that people are still touting that you have to do one sport. And obviously people aren't keeping up with it. And it's just been this trend that's gone on the past, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years that you have to yeah. do one sport. Because it certainly wasn't when we were kids. I mean, we were doing football and basketball in the wintertime. We were doing, you know, stickball, baseball in the spring and summer. We were doing, you know, other sports just all year round. It's just whatever the season was. Yeah, well, Mike, Mike and I grew up, Mike and I were teammates on the stickball team in the, in the summertime. So, um, you know, it's just, it, it was always just a new season of, of playing going on. So You would switch, like the season would end, you're yeah. like, what's next? Yeah, yeah absolutely. There, there's never overlapping. You know, as a parent of kids in elementary and stuff like that, you should see all the things, you know, going on. It's 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 really amazing with, with, with what they do. So Len, you asked, the, you said people are saying you got to do one sport. Who's saying that? I think when I talk to parents, there's I think this pressure for the parents to get their kids to play on these teams because of what the coaches are telling the parents or what the other kids are already. Some of those kids that are so committed to baseball, if, if your kid doesn't keep up with all those other kids, they're going to be left behind and they're not, not going to be able to, to get the swings in and get the throws in and just that tumble track. And, and tumble track, if you whatever that is in gymnastics. Um, it just seems Nothing. like parents just feel this pressure, despite what all of us say about not specializing, to still specialize. And I can play devil's advocate, like as a coach who still coaches a bunch of middle school girls and high school girls, like I understand that you need to put in the time and Absolutely. the hours to get there, right? Absolutely. And I get that, but we see the other side of that here at Champion, which is like the same injuries over and over and over. I just had a girl two days ago who quit gymnastics because her back hurt so bad because all she was doing was gymnastics and she's 14 and now, now what's the long-term potential of that? Nothing, you know, because now she's like, I can't even like function as a human. So <laughs> she quit. You know, but I mean, for anyone looking, there are a ton of new research studies that came out from BJSM and a bunch of IOC consensus statements that are large. So yeah, are looking, there's a ton of like, <laughs> there, there's a ton out there, and I, I think if you look at, um, if if you look at the research for youth injuries here, they're happening from overuse, right? Like in baseball, we tried to extrapolate this like for years, right? With oh, it's the curveball, oh, it's mechanical stuff like inverted W. No, it's just overuse, right? Now those are, same way. The, same right. Now don't get me wrong. Like if, if you pull vault a certain way, if you tumble a certain way, did I say yeah, that? Sure. Did I say that well. Yeah. If you tumble track, if you curveball a certain way, that's kind of what they're calling that way. <laughs> if your arm slot is a certain way, if your cartwheel is one specific way or something like that, then like okay, you may be you may be putting more <laughs> stress on your body than normal. No, no back maybe. Right, so maybe, maybe like your specific technique is a little bit more stressful, but that's not your primary cause. Your primary cause is overuse, yeah. right? So, you know, you know, we're seeing it in every sport now. Every sport's trying to go over. And, and what I was, you know, getting at with Lenny a little bit there was that the people that are telling you this are probably the people making money off right. it. Right, so yeah, for sure. The people running the tournaments, the showcases, uh, the totally travel teams. Gymnastics. Here's the problem though. So we have a baseball training academy here. We have travel teams that train out of here. The training and the care that these kids get are top notch. They're amazing and they definitely help them become a better baseball player, right? So I can actually see that being a good thing and I don't think the kids here are overused because we're a part of their development process. We talk about that process for you. But a lot of people want to say that travel ball is the evil part here. Yeah. But theoretically, I've seen the flip as well where the towns are saying they're anti-travel ball because they say like, okay, if you're gonna play travel ball, you have to also play town. And I'm seeing this in multiple sports, not just baseball, soccer and everything else. They say you can't not play town. And I'm like, whoa, what is it? Why? That doesn't seem to make sense. And, and I get it. For the people that don't have the financial, you know, or maybe the desire like other people, they wanna still have town leagues for them. And I get that, that's fine. But 
how can we do a better job? Like, okay, you're playing on three teams. What can we do to mitigate that risk, I yeah. guess? What do you guys think? Like, it, it, we're, look, we can talk about it being bad and it's not the best forever. No though, it's yeah. not going to get yeah, better. Exactly. So what can we do to fix it? So let's ask that question. You're playing on three teams in any sport. How do you make that work? Yeah, well, it's funny you guys are asking me. I'm really well, you're the one that brought up all three <laughs> sure. sports. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like let him let talk baseball for a second. Right. That's the easy one, right? right? If you're a baseball pitcher, you're playing on three teams. How do you mitigate your risk? Yeah, so we, you know, for here because we deal with this. Uh, we have arm care for kids. We offer that as a program. We offer that as an appointment, so we can work on some soft tissue stuff and, and just some education on exercise training. We offer strength and conditioning programs. The problem is it comes down to time. Yeah. So they have three different sports that they or three different teams that they're playing. I got a kid right now, he's trying to figure out how he's going to squeeze in summer conditioning when he's playing on um, multiple teams. And it's just like, what's the priority? You got to understand, I know you want to play summer ball all winter long, you've been waiting to play baseball, and now I'm telling you, you need to exercise. Yeah. And that's not what he wants to do, but I, I need to show him that that's a, a huge priority to make sure he can still play baseball come July and August. Okay, you know? okay, let's say you can't change that though. What can we do? He's playing on three teams. What can we do? With that, though, like, right. sorry, so, so we're, no, we're not going to play on less teams. Right. We're not going to have and, more and time. We, we could talk pitch counts, but that's not going to happen. Realistically, they're going to go play on a team, and they, if they get to 40 pitches, I can tell the coach, "Hey, I got to get out of the game because I have to throw 30 pitches maybe tomorrow <laughs> for my other team." <laughs> no, um, as a parent, though, don't you think that's a good thing a parent should do? I think if parents were a little bit more able to voice their opinion, and not have it affect their kids' playing time on the team, I think that would be huge. The coaches don't want to be told that. Um, so that's going right. to be another issue. Coaches don't want to be told what by each individual parent who can play and how many pitches they can throw. I don't know what the solution is. You I, know? I think the biggest thing that I've learned from you two that you've done in baseball that you guys do well is educating people on like what is your long term end game? Like what do you want out of this long term? Like do you want to get to college? Do you want to get drafted? Because I'm having the same conversation. Gymnastics season just ended. Nationals and the elite calendar is coming down and everyone is destroyed. I, I got like 10 new patients who didn't come during the season and held on too long and are losing the entire summer now. And it's like a small, like, you don't like chastise someone, but you do, like, this is a very important lesson you have to learn. Right. If you keep doing this over and over, you're a freshman right here and you want to compete in college, right? No one's going to look at you if you're hurt all season long and you can't compete, right? right? Like, right. you have to be healthy enough to compete. And I think uh, Nick Ruddick, who's an Olympic friend of mine, coached the Olympic GBR team, said, like, if you don't show up to the most important meet of the year, no one knows you exist, right? The videos in the gym are one thing, but if you're always hurt and can't compete on that stage, it doesn't matter, yeah. right? So a lot of kids want to go to showcases in the summer, and I'm trying to tell people, I'm like, I'll take two weeks off from the gym, two weeks of light basics, and then I'm trying to do what you guys have done in baseball with our programs here we're starting. It's like, you have to lift two days a week, you have to come in for soft tissue care, you have to like count your numbers a little bit, and like it's starting to go, but I think education on their performance goals will always far outweigh well, we don't want you to get hurt. We don't want you to burn out. Like nobody cares about that. The coaches don't care about that. They're like, right. they want to see you perform well. Like, well, right. we can peak you towards the end, and you get picked up by a team. Everybody wins, right? And I think that's probably the better route to go. You know, and the hard part too, when you're playing multiple teams, something that you have a lot of coaches that are trying to, you know, be your coach, right? Yeah. I feel like you you need one person. Right. You know, we always say, that. unfortunately, we become that person to quite a few people here. But it's after you get hurt, mm. right? And then we become the guy that the guys that coordinate your life, right? We say like, all right, we'll do this, don't do that, do this here. But like, look, if you're playing for multiple teams, I mean, I, I think there's things you can do though, right? Totally. Like if you're a pitcher, like, okay, don't pitch in town ball, right? Because who cares about town ball other than it's a blast. And I think you should play town ball, right? But there's no benefit of you pitching in multiple leagues, right? So to only pitch in one league, right? Or maybe like, you know, you're, you know, for other sports, it's something you can mix up the position a little bit. So if you can't mix up the sport, maybe you can mix up the position. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can, you know, do your, you know, your, you know, it, just different things for different teams. I just think that's one way that you could potentially do it. And that's been effective. I've been able to get through. I think parents are definitely understanding it now that that they control their kid and I've been able to influence multiple kids talking to their parents and the kids are on board they're like I tell I haven't had a kid one kid pitch for two years he had uh, multiple um, little league elbow diagnoses and we shut him down from pitching for two years he was the biggest kid throwing the hardest for his age group and we had he hasn't thrown in two years he's just now beginning to pitch in games because his parents got on board that that was gonna be the best plan for him 
two years ago per my advice and I hopefully it continues to work out he's pitching well and he's still you know dominating now so. every, every sport has a way to do that if you look hard enough and work with the coaches I think I think swimmers can swim different strokes I think like gymnasts can do different event focuses baseball can do different mm -hmm. positions like there's a way to tweak that but you have to have communication that's really important right. Right. and if you don't have communication then you have to have one central hub that's right. controlling it and that has to be the yeah. parents has That's, to be the parents in my mind. The parents are the ones that are doing it. But parents are uneducated. Yeah. So they have to become educated. Yeah. So you see our uphill battle right here. I think as a profession, what we need to do is we need to start having resources on how to mitigate these risks, not fight it, right? Mm -hmm. We can't just yeah. keep fighting it and say, no, 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 no. no. It. It's going to happen, right? Yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's end with one more question because I want, I want one, one other question. When is it appropriate to specialize? I, I, per, I mean, gymnastics is super early. I think that it should be multi-sport athletes. And I don't mean multi-sport athlete like play a bunch of sports, but like just go play and like do other stuff till at least like eight or 10. Like 10, I think for me. I know, right? <laughs> Still ridiculously insane, young. Right? Yeah. It's insane, right? But my sport's so different because people are done with their career at 21. All right, so, right, which is uh, total makes sense for gymnastics. But what about every other sport? I'd say college. So college, so you well, you wouldn't play, specialize. Play two sports in, in high school. Yeah. Why not? You play you play you play baseball, play soccer, play basketball. I think that's and and so you you said two sports and then you said three sports in there. I but think I think I that's. Said, I said one or the other. Right, that's right. I, I I I like the con. You know, we talk about this a lot. Like baseball. You know what I think the best thing baseball players do in the fall is not fall ball. And with our program here, we've we've almost gotten rid of fall ball. We'd love to get rid of fall, fall ball. We made fall, fall ball completely different. Our pitchers don't pitch in fall ball, for example, just like as an example. But what, what I would rather see them do is play soccer, right? But work on their agility, work on their leg strength, work on being an athlete, right? But then in the winter, train for baseball. That's okay, right? You don't have to play hockey or basketball in my mind, right? So look, as long as you're doing something a little different, sometimes I think that that helps a little bit. But the question then is, is what age again now? If you say throughout high school, I don't know, is that give them enough time to specialize? Like Middle Dan school. I think said. if you're going Division One baseball, I think late high school is a good time to specialize. If you're going to play Division Three baseball, like I did, um, <laughs> right? Maybe it's not you, as good. Then you do the three sports and you, right. you and have you, fun. Have fun, but I think right. ideally, if you're a Division One athlete going right. to play a, a, a decent program, which Division One is, you're you're good. I would say maybe junior, senior year, you consider yeah. specializing. It's tough though because cool. colleges look at like freshman year and you need tapes to be no, good enough. No, that's not you true. Know? Maybe in gymnastics. No. Yeah, not there in baseball. Not, baseball. Not, baseball. not in the other sport. Now look, you're on the radar of people freshman yeah. year, yeah. but you're not being looked at, right? And trust me, no no junior that stunk when they were a freshman, that is the best kid on the team junior year, is not going to get True. I think it's, a, team. a lot of time it's the late bloomers I that, were, yeah, that yeah. weren't good as freshmen yeah, that, that, that yeah. in well, baseball. And vice because survive. you get burnt out they as survive. a freshman if you're good because they <laughs> overuse you, yeah. and then you end up with literally these elbow Tommy John or something. That, yeah. There's early ID programs all over different sports, and that always happens. Like these kids get picked up when they're 10, 12, yeah. and then yeah, yeah exactly. they, they always plummet. Look, maturation, right? They just matured earlier, probably. Yeah. That's really yeah. all it is. So in most sports, it's junior summer. Right? right, or at least in baseball, it's junior summer. Right, maybe in football, it's junior. Because once you get to senior year, it's too late. You're already committed to a college and stuff like that. So it's junior year. So if junior year is the important year, then the question is, okay, when do you start specializing? If you start specializing senior year, right, but your best time to showcase was junior. Year. So I think an argu argument can be made that sophomore year you start specializing. Mm. And what does that mean? Again, if you're baseball, using as an example, play soccer. Like playing football is not going to help you, but in the winter like not playing basketball or hockey or something like that and actually maybe training to be yeah. a better baseball player. Yeah, that's true. That I get that's a good idea, right? But if you're if you're a stud three sport athlete, then look, becoming a better athlete's gonna help you in all of them. But at some point in time you gotta you gotta you have to probably specialize if like Lenny said, you're you're in that upper level like kind of thing. That's actually a good point, is your upper le upper level or I hate to say it, you have dreams of upper level. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you're a D three kind of guy that has D three, D one our dreams, yeah. right. you know, still train for your dreams, right? I mean, I don't know. So a sophomore year too young? Does anybody think that's too no. too young? And that was one of the biggest takeaways from the big research studies that if you are going to specialize early and choose that, you have to have a coach who knows how to periodize and tape and peak or like that was like 
blatantly obvious and like if you're gonna do it you have to have like deload heavy back and forth because nobody gets through a full year of that right yeah so I mean we, we gotta I think the pas- the pa- uh, parents have to be educated yeah for sure. and I think you need to find like I don't know maybe, maybe it is maybe the solution is centers like ours mm-hmm. where we have everything together where it's like look you come in here we can help maintain you in season we can help increase your performance in the off season we can do some skill coaching maybe it's just finding that thing right there mm-hmm. if all you're doing is playing sports and you're never taking care of your body that's probably a whole other thing you have mm-hmm. to address mm-hmm. like Lenny right. kind of mentioned a little bit so I, I think it, it's I think the general sense is we're definitely over specialized, sure. right? There's a time and a place for it, right? And you got to figure out when and how, but you Not have to, years old. the more you specialize, the more you have to mitigate that risk, either by taking care of yourself or changing up some of your workload type things. I mean, there's, there's lots of things you need to do, but I really think it starts with the parents. The kids aren't mature enough to make that decision. So the parents need to do it and you probably need to find facilities that can help you through this process. I guess that's how I would summarize. Right? Yeah. Sound good? So I, I don't think we solved anything today, right? But I think that was a nice <laughs> healthy conversation. Yeah, it was a nice healthy discussion about youth sports specialization. Look, as a profession, I think one of the biggest makes mistakes we can do is go out there and just scream about how it's wrong. Yeah. Totally. It's not going to work. It's going to get worse, right? I can't imagine what my kids' kids are going to be doing because my kids' lives are crazy. I can't imagine. We did. We didn't do any of this stuff. It's amazing what they do. So I have no I have no idea what it's going to be like in the future. So. Hopefully, look, that's a start, but it's education and it goes to the parents. And I think that's the biggest message here. So, you know, if you have parents, somebody you work with, you know, share this episode with them. Mm-hmm. I think I think that would help. Yeah, so. sure. Anyway, we'll wrap it up. We appreciate it. Head to MikeRinald.com. Click on that podcast link. You can fill out the form. Ask us more great questions. Rate, review, subscribe on all the main things like iTunes and Spotify. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.